and welcome to Theoretically Practical. So, uh, you guys are probably itching to see my free Ducati. And uh, I gotta say, it's completely real, it's completely free, but just like all of my legions of lovers and my parents and most of my teachers in high school, you too will probably be disappointed. This is the Ducati. See where it says Ducati on it? It is the same Ducati. This is a between 60s and 70s, roughly 11 horsepower. It's an IS-11 Ducati diesel. So it's a single cylinder air-cooled diesel. This would, this is probably the original uh, mount that it would have come on. And uh, yeah, it's single cylinder air-cooled diesel. I bet it was like a pressure washer or something. If anybody knows what this was, let me know. I'm just kind of curious. Um, it's pretty cool setup. It's, uh, it's got one of those uh, starter generator things like a golf cart has. So this would be the starter and the generator, but I will probably remove that in favor of using the, uh, the rope start because whenever I put this on, I don't really want it to have, uh, you know, have to wire it up in power. So there, there's the, uh, the nameplate for whatever, whatever good that does you. It's the Tipo IS-11, 432 uh, cc's. Yeah, uh, Gear E3200, I think that's max RPM. So the, this, is, this is not actually made by Ducati. I don't know the, um, the name of the company that actually made it, but in the 60s and 70s, apparently Ducati was struggling. And so they started selling this line of diesel engines, which is made by a different Italian company. And they also sold them, Wisconsin sold them as a WD series diesel, but I don't know the exact crossover. So I saw this on a marketplace. The guy wanted a couple hundred bucks for it, which fair enough. It's a single cylinder diesel around me. They, they're un, unfindable. So, but when I talked to him about it, he said, well, the injection pump isn't on it. I said, well, uh, you know, is, he said it needs an injection pump. I said, is it, is it missing? He said, no. He said, I think I have all the parts. And that's in this bag. Now, I'm not going to let you guys sit and uh, wait for me to cut to the chase, but I looked at a uh, at a parts breakdown, and other than potentially a shim spring, which it wasn't clear if that was optional or not, and a lot of times they are, um, I think everything is there. The important thing was hanging. When I picked this up, these were hanging on the top of the motor like this. These are not an exhaust valve. These are timing shims. And I'm hoping that's all there were, uh, because otherwise the timing on this will be wrong. And if it is, we'll have to, what I'll probably do is put shim washers in between these two and then goop it together when I'm done. But basically the, this sets the height of the injector, which sets the timing. You can delay it or advance it a little bit. Other than that, there's a, there's a decompression lever. Do not use it to stop the engine. I think it'd burn your valves or something. Uh, the injector's still there. I was considering taking the injector out first and cleaning everything and taking it all apart, but I think I'm just gonna leave it as is, uh, simply because the manual says, don't mess with it if you don't have to, and it's probably okay, and I don't really want to unless I have to. That's, uh, I guess it's a lame excuse, but I feel like you guys should be used to that for me. This is my uh, my MO. I'm a very consistent guy. We're gonna sit down and look at the bits of the injector pump and see what we can do with them. All right, so here is our admittedly uh, quite modest collection of parts. Um, I would not have known how to put this together without looking at the factory service manual. And that shim that I was talking about was missing goes on that in this spring and that sets the uh, check valve pressure. It's something that may or may not be needed. So one thing was this right here, when I picked it up and I've already freed it up, you could not rotate this at all. And this is the fuel metering valve. So you can see that it's got a tapered valve on it. And I, is either the sh I think it's also the shutoff, but this is the fuel metering valve and that sits in this and basically, you know, sets how much fuel can go in or out of it. So this is, 
almost certain. Well, this is definitely why it wasn't running. Is it the only reason it wasn't running? I think we'll find out. But this would have stopped you dead in your tracks. On the whole, I'm, I'm totally pleased with the amount of parts that I actually have. And uh, I think we can get this back together. So we're going to I'm going to set up actually go grab my new uh, pseudo tripod and set up and we're just going to slap this back together. I did clean some of the stuff with the very lightest grade of scotch bright, but really, really gentle. Don't use sandpaper on anything in an injection pump. You will absolutely ruin it instantly. Don't stone anything even. But like, you know, quadruple lot steel wool to clean some staining off and maybe some very, very high grit scotch bright would be acceptable. But uh, this, the grit I'm talking about, you probably wouldn't be able to find in your local hardware stores. So I'll get this set up, and as we put it back together again, we'll sort of talk about, uh, well, I, we're not really gonna talk about function because I'm not 100% sure everything works, but I have a pretty good idea how it all goes together. So we'll get, we'll get that done. So I have a pretty good idea about the part order, but the assembly order may take me a couple tries to get. So we're gonna start with this, which I, I guess I'll call it the metering valve body. And I'm just gonna blow everything off with air before I put it back together again, because I could already see some little flakes of stuff on it. We're gonna want this guy here. This is the metering valve. Now, one thing to note, the metering valve is switched by, and I don't know if you can see inside of this, but there's a, there's flats on this that move it around. You definitely want to make sure that this is inside your valve body the right way. And the easiest way to do that, I, I'm imagining, is just to put them in. And uh, it's a real close fit. And make sure that the cut groove lines up with that. So that'd be full throttle. And so that'll be somewhere in the in the range. And that, if I'm not mistaken, goes in from the top. Then the uh, throttle is what this is. Uh, it's also the shutoff. It uses the throttle as the shutoff. Uh, but throttle and shutoff, that's the next thing. And that goes... There's a little pin that's supposed to be sticking out to, uh, to catch that little groove there. And it doesn't really do that. So I'm gonna try to tap that in and see if it, hopefully just taps in a little bit. I don't know, I'm not feeling awesomely confident about that, but get a hammer and beat that on in. Surely that's good for it. Oh, actually that's, ex yeah. Might have gone a touch too far. But now that's proud of the, uh, if you look down inside, you can see that pin sticking out. I may have to tap it back out a little bit. I might've gone just a touch too far, but um, yeah, awesome. Okay, blow this out. I'm gonna probably blow everything out two, three, four, five times. So, uh, you know, keep your volume low ish anyways this is in here the the slot is lined up i always double check stuff like this and i like to talk to myself about it even if you guys weren't here and yeah i went, I went a little too far on that i didn't think it would move that easily so it's not even the pin it's there's a, a little circular area that surrounds the pin and i'm just need to push that back in just a just a smidge all right verify alignment slide it down in there i'm gonna take this off and try this is gonna take me a few tries it's probably gonna skip some of this okay we're back we got some stuff this is what i was missing i was wondering how so i knew this spring went over here and had a little keeper on the end of it. That's what this guy is. It, it goes over the top of it. And basically you, you compress the spring. It's almost like a valve spring thing. But I was wondering what kept this 
metering valve from pulling all the way off. So that moves that moves up and down with the engine stroke as the pumping action, and this sets how much fuel gets pumped. That makes sense now. And the way that the only reason this whole thing doesn't get pulled out is because once this goes in like this, then this part, this is gonna snap in to hold this from pulling out, and then I'll be able to put the spring on. Okay. That's captivated now. I think I can put this back together. This is sort of a, a confusing little guy, for sure. I understand why the dude previous to me did not have particularly much luck with it. He was also a high school teacher trying to do this with a group of uh, 16 year old boys, 16, 17 year old boys. So, you know, you can't be too hard on a guy. That's for sure. All right. So we might be removing this, but at least this part will just now, nah, whatever. It's going to be a pain if I have to remove it, but uh, I don't know a good way to te test it. I keep hold. I'm sorry about my framing today. It is not it is not my day, and I really don't know what I'm doing, which doesn't help. All right, so next part, we're going to try to get this spring and keeper in here. Keep your eyes peeled on this 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 keeper because there is about a 97% chance it's going to hit orbit. Oh no, it's not. Oh, don't be that way. I gotta pull this back as far as it'll go and then not hit it. Don't flinch. Ah. No. Ah. I just gotta push it through that keyhole and lift up and it'll be in there, but. Oh, wait a sec. I'm, I'm not the brightest. I'm just going to hold something in the hole, keep it in place, and action. Okay. Nope. Whoa, 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 whoa. And action. Oh, no. Why are you coming off of that? Wow, that does not want to be in there. It just wants to pull. I can't really quite pull out all the way. I think the, oh, there we go. Nope, it just doesn't want to seat very well. I think the bore will hold this in place. I'm gonna go take a quick peek at that. Okay, I think as long as I get this in, uh, it won't be inclined to move. I just wish it sort of clipped in a little better, but it does not want to. So we got our throttle. And basically, there's a little cam driven thing that will push this up and push the center of that up and pump. And then it will pump past this little check valve. And that's how it generates pressure. And that's why I said the timing of these will set the height of this above the camshaft. So the camshaft has more than enough stroke. Um, this one may not be timing. This one might be fuel delivery amount and the and there might be some in the bottom in the cam roller for timing. It's kind of a complicated give and take relationship to get those set up right, which is why I'm really hopeful that I won't have to figure out how to get those set up right and it'll just work. And oh, good, that's still there. I thought I'd lost that. All right, so the next thing that goes in is the check valve. And uh, I'll pull this out just for for so the reason it has the plus sign on the end of it is just so that fluid can pass in the flutes and it's again super tight in that bore they don't wiggle at all and then it just sits on a little uh chamfer right there and on a little chamfer right there so it's really well aligned it's just a little check valve uh one way valve that also the pressure that sent up the line is set by this spring and then the shim that I don't have, which I may or may not need. So we will put this in there, thusly. Okay. And then uh, we're gonna put this and this. I actually think this is the, I had a couple of O-rings in this one. I think I got, this is the original O-ring and I got kind of too big 
and kind of too small. I'm going to go with too small, and when it leaks, I'll probably force too big in there. Or uh, it might be that these are standard O-rings, and um, this is a metric application, probably, because Italy, but then again, also could be standard, because Italy. I don't have a problem with Italians, okay? I feel like I'm I'm bashing on them a lot lately. It's not that's not my intention. It just comes out so natural. Alrighty. Here we go. So and then you got this down in here. This copper wash is supposed to come out, and I would replace it and remove it, but I, I can't. I could not get it to come out. Put that little guy down there. And so we put this on this. I think the only reason it's got a hole through there is just to keep things lubricated. And uh, as an, oh, that's the fuel passage. That's why it's got, I don't know why it has a cross hole. It just does. Okay, so that goes on there. That goes on. Actually, I'll probably, how will I put this together? I think what I will do is put this like this. And so that's the preload. Once that's all tightened down, that's how much force that's going to have to overcome on that tiny, tiny surface area. So like for me, it's probably like, you know, I don't know, four or five pounds to squeeze that. But for the fluid to push up on that circle and open it is going to be, you know, many, many times that. Uh, so, yeah. And I just finger tighten this for now. I'll be tightening this down more once it's on the machine. So there we go. Now I went from a pile of parts to uh, an injection pump. And it seems to do the things it is supposed to do. I really don't like how that keeper is really trying to escape. Uh, but I don't see how it would fit any. Oh, geez. Yeah, just take it off, Brent. That, that'll that make it better. Um, I, I'm looking at the bottom of it, and I think it's been chipped a little bit. So hopefully this won't be a recurring problem. But of all the parts I can probably make, though, this is probably one of the ones I could uh, get a buddy to make for me. There we go. I imagine this is a little cracking on it, too, that just getting hammered in that, uh, you know, against that surface. Because I would have thought that you would want this... Uh, the little nub in the middle of that to be proud of the rest of it, but it looks like that's going to get hammered too. So we may have to, we may, didn't lose it. We may have to revisit it. Awesome. One more time. Cause, cause if it's good to put it together once, it's better to put it together three times. Okay. So, uh, we're about ready to actually put this puppy together. I'm still not thrilled with that keeper, but I think we'll live. First thing I'm gonna do is take these and just wipe them off real carefully with my fingers. Make sure they're clean. Wipe this surface as well and set it down. Alrighty. So I'm gonna have to assume that it goes this way. Oh, all right. I got to do something about that keeper. I don't know. Or maybe I'll try one more time. Maybe oh, it's stuck down in there. All right. We're going to come back to this. Um, I'm going to think about that keeper and see if there's a. See if there's an opportunity for me to get something appropriate for it. So we'll be right back. Well, I might just try and make another one of these. What a pain. What a pain. I almost wonder if this is why the engine was abandoned in the first place, because if this broke and popped off the bottom of that, then the return, this is the return for this plunger pump and it wouldn't pump anymore. And I, I got to wonder if that's part of what was wrong with it. So, oh, well, almost lost it. Well, I'll uh, I'll make something and uh, we'll be back at it. All right, guys. So uh, there we go. All better. See how that sits nice and square and flat and doesn't fall out. And it's got good support on it. So this is the old one. I'll try to see if I can get a picture of it tighter. But you can see that that 
it's almost like a proper oval, whereas it should look more like a little bit like a keyhole. And on that side, you can really see that that little uh, lip on the inside is mostly blown out. So uh, I made this out of 4140 TGP pre-hardened steel because that was easy for me to get a hold of. Uh, hopefully it's the right choice. Uh, I might need to make it again and harden it, but I'm going to try it like this for now because it should work for a while. So I'm going to guess that the failure of this is why the engine was parked originally. And I say that because there's no way that this plunger would be stuck all the way down into the body unless it was forced there without the spring to pull it back. So now you can see you got this nice pumping action. I can't pump it more than that with one thumb. It's quite a stout spring. But you can also see that instead of like before, you know, I can't even pop this out of there. It's not gonna fly out on me, hopefully, I say with... Anyways, so anyways, now I got my throttle in. Got my throttle right there. Does the spinny bits. I got the thing in. I got the other thing in. I gotta remember to tighten up that top bolt, but um, we're ready to put it in. I also want to see where the, uh, okay, I'll get the light in, hopefully good enough so you can see. If you look in that hole, oh, there you go, you can watch the little thing. Does that move? It's, oh, oh, it's part of the governor. It's right in there. Right there, there's a little U-shaped rod, and I got to make sure that... When I drop this in, this lines up with that slot. So I think it's got to be over, yeah, over there somewhere. It should be pretty obvious as long as I hit it at all that it's in or, or not in the slot because it's going to go like this. And yeah, I think probably all the way to one side or roughly there should do it. Um, so yeah, let me put it in. All right, I'm going to try to slide this on in there. Sorry for the that the light's so poor. I'm gonna do my best to avoid it. I don't know, other than to hope that you've hit the slot, I don't know that there's a good way to get it in. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we're, I'm just gonna turn the engine until... So there we go. Okay, so it's always under a little bit of pressure. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna just put these bolts in. It's funny how much less light it looks on the camera. I, I see, can see perfectly fine what I'm doing. I look through the camera and it looks like I'm in the bottom of a the darkest pit you could possibly find. So. All right, next I got to put in the uh, the hard line for the fuel injector. There we go. Hopefully nobody massaged this too much. I'm not sure which way the thing goes anyhow. Okay, just going to play Jenga with it. I think it's going to go like this on this end. And, oh, that'll line up good. I just got to move this rubber hose out of the way. This rubber hose here is, they say it's like some vent thing, but how this system works, a little different than normally. Usually the bypass, the overflow from the injector goes back to the uh, injection pump. Uh, in the case of this, I think it's meant to feed back into that tank there. And then there's also this, which is a one-way valve upwards. And I think that this is, uh, they call it like an anti-bubble thing. So I think this is supposed to push on there. This hose is, is hard, 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 hard. But I'm gonna push it on and call it good enough for the moment. And uh, we'll get that injection pipe on there. But I wanna blow, I wanna blow this out first just to make sure there's no uh, junk in it. Cause uh, you cannot put junk through a, uh, a diesel the way you can with other things. All right, we're trying to take the bottom of this off. Just see what we're dealing with here. I think we're going to be hosed. I'm going to be bottle feeding it for now. But like I said, I would really like to get this fuel tank to work because it is about the coolest thing. Because uh, it's the only part, it's the only thing that says Ducati on this whole 
not even really a Ducati motor. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. That wasn't bad. Is there any fuel in it? Oh, uh, no, not really. Just this cute little strainer, uh, which is pretty well gumped up with junk. That's okay. Oh, this is plastic. Huh. This little, little housing guy here is plastic, but I think what I can probably do, uh, not tonight, but another, or not for this video, but another point in time when I start using this, I can probably drill and tap this out if I'm really careful or drill it out and glue in a, a, a nipple. But that's why it's broken because the plastic nipple. And I'm kind of glad I'm not trying to run anything through that. Though I don't, I don't know if I can get more of these fuel filters. So yeah, it's a nice little, uh, kind of a nice little idea. I really like it, except that it doesn't seal apparently and it's broken. So we're just gonna put that away for now. There's nothing for us there. I think that can be repaired, maybe, hopefully, if I don't smash it. The throttle is this thing, which grabs this, but I think what I'll just do is grab that with a pair of vice grips and just hold it there, or, oh, I bet, um, no, pro well, maybe, maybe it's a, maybe it's something that can be loosened, there we go. Yeah, that's moving the throttle a little bit. I wonder if this can be broken free as well. There we go. Oh, well, the unfortunate thing about doing it that way means you gotta undo it to shut it off. So I think I'm better off if I just, uh, if I just put a grip on it. In any case, this isn't actually moving the rod that we were messing with in there. Uh, this is uh, the kill, the stop is over here and that's throttle up, but this is uh, affecting the governor. The governor controls the rod up in there, which is a little weighted spinny boy. And hopefully we don't need to look at the governor. I don't wanna look at the governor. We're not gonna look at the governor right now. Uh, Cause again, I just wanna see if this thing will even bark off. I'm not, I don't know anything about the condition of this thing really at all. So, yeah. All right, guys, here's my extremely crappy fuel tank setup. So uh, this still hooks up to here, which is why this is so low. That's just full of oil, it, uh, diesel, well, I guess it's oil, uh, fuel oil anyways. And that goes down to feed the injection pump. I have left these lines really loose because we'd like to see the injection pump pump. I did end up threading this out. So if I need to shut it off, I will have to screw it in. I also can put my hand over the intake. This does have a decompression lever, which I think is cool. And uh, we'll be using the electric starter generator, at least for this test. I did not reinstall the muffler. Uh, that's on purpose. Not, no, I just is lazy. Let's just start. Uh, I think this is the decompression position. And we'll just start cranking it. And this this here is the, the, the excess that it's gonna hopefully drip into that container there or not, but whatever. We gotta do it someday, right? All right, contact. It occurs to me, I can't see that. So, well, it's still dry, so I didn't do anything yet. you guys saw that but it's coming right out there so we can lock that off and it's actually coming out at the top I'll bring you guys over and we'll see it bled at the injector now I'm not sure that this isn't all clogged up and I'm gonna have to go in there but 
Uh, the manual seems to suggest that I don't want to go in there unless I have to. Okay, that's, uh, I feel like this is, this is going well all of a sudden, so something's gonna fail pretty quick here, but, whoa, forgot the thing is very, very, very badly balanced because there was supposed to be more than this on the, uh, cart. Okay, and action, all right. And I'm just gonna spin it over some more and just see if any, any oil comes out anywhere. Oh, I'm gonna move you guys because you are right, right in the line of fire. So am I, this is gonna be good. Oh, all right. That's a tremendously good sign if you guys can see the smoke coming out of here. It means we're, we're really starting to get somewhere. Is that still leaking though? Let me check it. Nope. Okay. These are good things. These are good things. What I'm gonna do to get the intake hotter is I'm just gonna heat up the intake with a torch to heat the air intake temperature up. Okay, let's go for contact again, maybe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it spin over fast with the that off. We're getting something out of it. It's still very, very cold. I also haven't even adjusted the valves or any of the other stuff that I'm gonna need to do. But I also say that if we weren't getting any smoke out of here, you would know that the injection pump, the injector isn't injecting anything. Whereas we're getting something out of there. The injector is doing something. I'm messing with a little bit. I think we're, uh, we're getting close to the point where she might do something. Um, got the decompression lever on. That's, that's the word. And we're gonna give her hell. We got some, uh, we got some noise and we got some thunder. So we have fixed a uh, injection pump. I'm gonna try it one more time and see if maybe it'll, uh, it'll stay running for a little longer. I'm also gonna, oh, I move my bucket so I'm catching a little bit more of the spilled fuel. Or maybe I want a little more throttle than that. I don't know what I want. All right, we'll try that one more time. I shouldn't be in front of this. It's not, it's not a, it's not a good place to be. All right. Oh. All right, I think the governor's not connected right in there. I think we're gonna have to go back inside, but uh, oh, that's, uh, that's loud. The other thing is, if this thing runs away, I'm gonna put my hand over the intake if I think it's gonna blow itself up, but yeah. So anyways, contact. <laughs> yep, governor is definitely not, not connected right or set up right. So we're gonna have to go in there next, I think. All right, we're gonna come back to this and we're gonna, we're gonna take apart the governor and make sure the governor's freed up because I bet the governor's gummed up. Obviously the injector did not need to be messed with, so that's good. We'll probably try to get a fuel system that doesn't leak quite so effusively on my floor, but uh, yeah, we'll get this thing. Man, it sounds pretty healthy actually for the three seconds it runs and blows my eardrums out. 
All right, guys, we're going to dig into the uh, the governor. Um, we'll start by taking this cover off. Which is just the throttle. The throttle on a diesel is just like on a small engine where when you move the throttle, it doesn't necessarily move the butterfly valve on the carburetor because the butterfly valve on the carburetor is what controls the throttle set tells the governor how fast you want to spin at basically so uh just like this your throttle is requesting an rpm from the governor and the governor uh basically modulates the throttle to to maintain that rpm given a variety of loads so So, okay, so we definitely, one thing to note is uh, we definitely have full range of motion there. So, you know, this is definitely coming all the way and it's hitting that stop. So I don't think that's the problem. So next we're going to go under this cover here and uh, come on, there we go. We'll see what's underneath here. I don't think this cover's been off yet, but it does come, these screws come off suspiciously easily. So, yeah. As I'm taking apart, I realized something, because this switch on the front is supposed to be the throttle, and then it's got the arrow that says stop. Well, this is throttling up, but when you want to stop, you have to force it beyond that stop. So I thought that the throttle in no position was stopped, but clearly it goes back a little bit more. So that's kind of an interesting uh, little observation. And maybe I just need to start this thing at idle. What I really want to do is look in through here and see that this, the little lever arm in this is actually connected to what it ought to be connected to. That's my biggest concern. But I suspect now looking at it that I might have wanted to start it at idle and then rev it up after. But let's look underneath here. Uh, funnily enough, the manual for this has great parts breakdowns for the injector pump, great parts breakdown for the injector. And basically for the governor, it's like, yes, the governor is very important. You should be careful with it. Make sure it's set up correctly. All right, well, it's very hard to see in here, but this little guy here is the weight that's supposed to fling it. And if I move the throttle forward and pull the weight, or if I move the throttle back, that's it, back, and pull the weight, it moves forward. So this is, uh, I thought this might be stuck or something in here might be stuck, but this is clearly pretty functional. Uh, everything's nice and, and free, and if I look upside down in it, you can tell up way up in here, you can see that pin is in where it's supposed to be. It's in the slot. Which is my biggest, con which was my biggest concern. So um, I don't think there's much in here that I can do much with or about. Hopefully, I can get the spring hooked on that little stud in the middle there, right there, and get that cover put back on because everything looks good in here. But this time I try to start it. I think I'm going to give it no throttle at all, and maybe that's my problem. It. Uh, I talked to. I spoke to. Uh, my boss at work, who's uh, you know, pretty good with diesels, like very good with diesels, and he suggests that it might be revving up and tripping an over RPM thing and killing it. So maybe I need to start it off at an idle. I did not realize that the idle was one step above stop. Let's let's see if we can do that. All right, we're all back together again. Uh, that went surprisingly easily. So I guess I wanted to look in there because there's these hash marks on the bottom of this plate here. And I felt like if this knob is the throttle, it should travel through the whole hash marks. But this is the total throttle throw on this. But then when you want to stop it, you twist it back just that little bit more. So, okay. Well, I'm going to get set. Oh, I'm going to put the... Uh, I'm going to put the muffler on this time, because last time this was uh, just way too loud, way too loud. I also was noticing, and maybe this is part of the problem, but the uh, injector never actually returned to bypass, which was putting that out of my way. I thought that was odd. I, I, I figured that would bypass at some point. Oh, the other thing is people complain about these things being loud, but this muffler... 
There is a, there's nothing in there. It's just a, a, a hollow, like there's nothing to it. It's hardly a muffler. I kind of am not surprised it doesn't, you know, do anything. I think if I ever want to run this uh, and not have it be absolutely rude, I would consider stuffing that with steel wool. You know, stuffing the mouth of it with steel wool. Uh, as long as it doesn't affect how the motor runs, I think that would be uh, much, much quieter. So, all right. I'm going to get this thing all tightened up and then, um, then I'll be ready to try to start it again, hopefully. And uh, I'm going to have my hearing protection on as well. So you'll hear me shout at you. Okay, guys. Well, uh, we're going to give it a shot. I don't know if it'll start up as easy as yesterday. Come on. Just a little putt, 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 and then she goes. Just give it the tiniest bit of throttle. Well, that was a little better. That was a little better. We're getting somewhere with it. Assuming that there's, there's still a little fuel in there, so that should be okay. So if I keep working the throttle, oh crap, don't spill. There we go. If I keep working the throttle, it, it stays running. So I don't, I don't know what that's about. I didn't want to mess with this, but we got nothing coming out of the bypass. There should be fuel coming out of the top of that. And it's only barely damp. So I think, I think this is coming out which is relatively easy, so, hope, well, hopefully it's not married in there. I think that's what's happening, though. I think the, uh, all the fuel's going down the bore and none of it's bypassing, which, I don't know, it's just not a good sign. So, this thing we didn't want to mess with, we're going to mess with it. Let's see if we can get that injector out of there. Oh, wow, that came out, that loosened up easy. All right. Well, we're probably not getting a perfect spray pattern out of there. I'm a little bit concerned this body may never loosen up, but... And uh, it does say in the manual, scrape this with a piece of wood to get the carbon off. Do not uh, use like a wire brush or anything on that. You'll ruin the uh, injector nozzle. And on this one, the injector nozzle is, you know, like irreplaceable, so... Well, I thought these two would be married together for life, but I took a little heat on that with the, with the torch. And by a little, I mean more than I can touch with my hands and it comes right off. I'm going to take this out of the vise and do this on the bench. So when I drop all the small parts, I might be able to find them again. On the bench that's, that's perfectly clean and clear and doesn't have a... Uh, this on it. We don't, we won't talk about this today though. That's, no. Mm. Ooh, it's still a little spicy. Ow. Ooh. Just gonna keep burning myself. All right, that's definitely a thing. Ooh, ooh. Probably shouldn't have put that much heat to it, but I did. So I'm guessing this little, this little guy here was probably just a little bit stuck because it should, um, it should bypass. Oh, that was good. I, oh, at least I didn't lose those springs. This is what I was talking about, people. You do not want to lose these shims because this is shimmed for pressure. Uh, that's what sets the blow off pressure of the injector, which is obviously not terribly, terribly wrong. So, whew. Woo. 
It also says not to touch a couple of these surfaces here because they're very precise. I don't know that that would matter at this point in the game. Try to pull this one out. Does it come out? Ooh, ooh. So, but yeah, there's nothing, uh, nothing in there. So it should have it should have been coming out the back there, except for uh, this little pressure valve. Of course, that could mean I'm not making enough uh, pressure at the injection pump. It's hard to say. All right, I'm gonna fiddle with these a little bit, and I'll come back when I know uh, when I have an idea of what's going on, which is gonna be a minute. All right, guys. So found the problem. These two parts used to be married together, and if this doesn't lift up after injecting the diesel, um, then it can't bypass. If it can't bypass, then it's gonna mess with your timing or something. It's not good. It shouldn't have been glued in. It went from being glued in place to, uh, to sliding in super gentle and easy. So I'm gonna put that back in. We're gonna screw the whole injector back together again. And uh, yeah, that should be, should be back in action. All right, guys. Well, uh, got the injector on. I bled it already. Um, I suspect I should see some coming out of there, but that uh, that atomizer was so stuck. I don't know how this was even running for half a moment the way it was. So I'm gonna set you guys down over here. Let's uh, let's see if things don't go a little different this time, eh? that's it for this week we now have a really good running little single cylinder italian diesel that's not made by ducati but it does say ducati on the cover i'm gonna order some parts for the fuel tank if i can find them or try to repair some and see if i, I want to get a fuel filter and oil filter on this and get it working off the fuel tank but i'll just do that behind the scenes it's not going to be all that fun uh i wish i would have shown you more on the inside of the injector but i i just was struggling with that I have a plan for this that's gonna happen quick. It's not gonna take as long as the skid steer because it's much simpler and, uh, you know, has entirely more donut potential. Yeah, so that's all for this week. And uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't say and uh, yeah that many times. Put this in. What the hell? <laughs>